Will the Reserve Bank cut interest rates again? Woolworths spinning off its grog business and deeming rates. They've got to change. Pensioners are being absolutely ripped off. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard. And we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. Well, I've got to say, I sound a bit like Ray Hadley then, but, but Paul, these are hot topics. Will the Reserve Bank cut rates again? Well, Peter, I don't know why they cut yesterday, but they did. All the economists are giving them plaudits. The government's giving them plaudits. So uh, yeah. Phil Lowe's paying the uh, the game. The central bank is interest rates down at 1%. The market wants them to cut again now, talking about yeah. November. I think they're now on hold for a little while, Peter, and they'll, they'll, they'll sit back and they'll see whether... Look, they left the door open, clearly looking at the language yesterday, but they've got to see the impact of what the, of it now a half percent cut does. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess the next timetable would be around about November. So cup I think day, cup, cup day. day. A cup day cut, mm. rate cut is a possibility. Yeah. But, look, you can't take it much lower. And that's why the banks didn't pass on the full amount, Peter. So we've seen the banks, by and large, it's not pass because on. they're selfish, Paul. No, but, look, you've got to understand, I'm a, I'm a banker. Bankers have deposits. Ex -banker. And you can't... You wouldn't be sitting right? here if you were and a banker. You, if you're already getting 0%, yeah. <laughs> you can't pay people anything less. Okay. So, okay. of course, the banks are getting a squeeze, and that's why the only 20 basis points of yesterday's 25 has been yeah. passed on. And overall, over the 50 basis points, each of the banks has passed on about 40. So Which should help the economy. And, Paul, the bottom line is this. You've got this double-barrel rate cut. You've got tax cuts, which should come through yep. this They'll week. get passed on Thursday. Yep. You've got um, lower dollar. You've got infrastructure spending. And, uh, and look, yesterday, uh, the ANZ weekly Roy Morgan confidence jumped by 4%. Now, I don't, I don't trust weekly ones as much as monthly, mm -hmm. but a 4% jump is the biggest in a long, long time. I do think the economy will turn. And if uh, the, Dr. Phil sees that the economy is improving, he won't cut again. He doesn't want to cut again. He, he'd rather stay at 1%, but the economy has to do well. And Donald Trump's going to have a role there. If this trade talk thing is dragged out longer, we might see another case. I think the trade thing is going nowhere quickly, Peter. I, I would have thought it was a bit underwhelmed by what happened at the weekend, but uh, mm. they've agreed to keep talking. Well, that's great. Uh, at yeah. least we're not having... But we've seen some more noise about Europe. So, look, Donald wants to win on this one, right? Yeah. And uh, I think he's going to take it... As, he's going to, going to play a long way. So I'm not if sure he, the markets aren't going to get a little more disappointed right. by well, the lack of he, progress. The longer right? he plays, the more likely they'll cut rates. Let's go to the next topic. Woolworths spinning off its grog business. Yeah, big news for Woolworths uh, shareholders today is a plan to spin off its its, its Endeavour drinks business. That's the uh, Dan Murphy's and uh, other parts mm. of the Woolworths business. Plus it is also... Is BWS part of Woolworths? Uh, that's part of, uh, of Coles. Or Coles. But it's mainly the Dan Murphy's business. There are some other brands yeah, and other things brands, like... Yeah. Uh, the, the Wine House, Langton's, uh, there's a whole lot of other parts of their business as well. Plus they have a shareholding, they had a joint venture with an Australian ALH, which is a hotel group. Yep. And of course that's the one that's been problematic, Woolworths owning pubs, pokies, you know, the ESG type lever's been pulled. So that's all ESG, like they're normal people. And environmental, them. social gov governance. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so they might actually, they could get on the ethical investing. Sorry, ethical, risk. ethical investing, yeah. yeah. So, so if, they, they, if they lose their association with Grog and poker machines, they might get on the ethical investment, which can be good for the shareholders. Yeah, so the hotel group will get wound, it'll be a separate company, mm -hmm. and Woolworths shareholders will end up with about 85% of it, mm -hmm. and there'll be a one for one demerger. So for one Woolworths share, you get one share. It's a of the purification of Woolworths. It's a purification of Woolworths. I mean, again, demergers generally uh, work pretty well, so mm -hmm. the history in Australia's demergers are generally fairly successful. Uh, there's obviously a cost, so the cost of this is about $275 million just to spin, spin this off. Mm. That'll be borne by Woolworths shareholders, but it mm. certainly um, solves a number of problems from Woolworths. There's some good strategic reasons. I think the market's going to like it. Mm. It's, it, and it won't happen until, uh, it'll take to, until November, until about the new group is formed. Then if there's going to be a demerger, you know, Woolworths shareholders will need to approve. This won't happen until sometime in, uh, next year, but uh, expect the market to get a bit of a bounce on that and say this is actually a good thing for shareholders. Okay, there's the bell, Paul. Now, pensioners getting ripped off on something that most people out there don't understand, deeming rates. What's the big issue here? Well, the big issue is the deeming rate. This is the rate that's used in the incomes test for pensions. Yeah. Hasn't been changed for a long time, right? And because it's too high... People who apply for a part pension often get knocked out because the assumption is their money is earning, what, 3.5% when it's probably yeah, only well, getting well, one. What happens is there are two rates. Let's, let's talk about for a single. Okay. For about the first $50,000, right. the deeming rate's, I think, 1 and, th one and three quarter percent. Not too bad. Not too bad. And then it goes up to 3 and three quarter percent for anything above that. Now, yeah. 
Uh, this includes things like the interest you're earning on term deposits. The, the, the government doesn't sit there and calculate mm. what interest they've got. They say you've got a term deposit of $100,000. We're going to deem mm. that the income you're getting is X. Yeah, so if, you've got, if, you, if you've got a super money account right, right. of half a million dollars, they're going to deem that the income you're earning is Y right, right. at these particular rates. And of course, for many people that have invested conservatively, you know, when interest rates come down and the deeming rate doesn't, mm. effectively it means that they're actually getting less income in hand, right. but the government's still saying for their pension, right. they're actually getting so the Centrelink same. So Centrelink says you can't have a part pension or they, they give you a smaller part pension because of it. So as interest rates come down, you reckon the deeming rate should come down, and they'll agree. Yeah, the deeming rate should come down. And what it means, of course, is that people are getting smaller part pensions from the government right. and others aren't eligible. So if the deeming rate was to come down, a lot of people would suddenly find their pension uh, would increase. And that would right? hurt the budget. That would hurt the budget. And the government sort of, because deeming rate's a little complicated, no and, and uh, it. you know, it's sort of gone to this sort of hole that, no, we just look at it periodically. Yeah. It's way overdue. You know, interest rates have come down half percent. It needs to be looked at urgently well, because... It has it, th th this hasn't been moved for a long time. Well, it hasn't, and it's one of the reasons, Peter, you talk about the thing about why the economy is, 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 is sluggish. Is sluggish. You know, we know that a lot of people working don't want to uh, are worried about their savings and worry about uh, their paying their mortgage. The same thing goes for pensioners, right? I mean, they're doing it tough as well, right? right. If you're on a if you're on a government pension, all right, and your incomes are getting squeezed, and that's what happens when interest rates come down, and you get less in your term deposit, you get less in your bank account, mm. and it becomes harder even with share investments to find those things yielding nice right. returns. Yeah. All right. Yeah, people have less income. So, so ScoMo and Josh Frydenberg have to look at the Scobo dealing rate. ScoMo and Josh need to look at the dealing rate now, do something about it. And I reckon if you're out there and you're impacted by this, get on to your politicians. The politicians know this is a big issue, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why they got back into Parliament, because the over 55s, by overwhelming majority, uh, voted for the coalition. It's now time to demand a little bit of a favour back from I the politicians. I think we have to change the name deeming rates to scheming rates. Yes, yeah, scheming. The government is scheming yeah, not to well, pay pensions what they deserve. Well, that's right, Peter. I think, I think you're onto something there. The, so, the uh, journalists would like that. The scheming journalists rates, would like it. Scheming rates, time to come down. Okay. I'm, I'm Paul Rickard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money.